Hey guys, I've got another one for you. Uh, and this one here, very interesting. This is actually a friend's watch. Uh, this is a watch I, I ended up buying for a friend who wanted to get a Japanese watch uh, when I was away on one of my Asia trips. And uh, he gave me some criteria and a budget and I said, I think I've got just the thing for you. And uh, here it is. Um, and he didn't think there were a lot of videos out there of it, so I thought, okay, let's let's uh, let's do this. Let's let's do a, a little overview and see what's going on. So, <clears throat> this is the S A R Y zero five five. This is a entry level presage line dress watch with a date date kanji wheel. You can see beautiful uh, Japanese and English kanji day date wheel there. Um, very interesting. Great way to learn uh, how to read some Japanese there when you get your days of the week straight. Uh, very clean, beautiful dial. You can see this is a true made in Japan watch. This is a true JDM made in Japan as, as shown here on the, on the dial. Beautiful pearl S and pearl sheen dial. Um, you know, he actually really admired my Sportura uh, GMT. Um, with the polar dial. This has something like that. Not uh, as the grooves on this, you know, the way this was done, not quite the same thing. A little bit different, but subtle, and yet it really does catch the light in a beautiful way. Beautiful sign crown, uh, as you can see, not a screw down, but um, the finish on it is beautiful. Well done. Uh, nice action. You can wind on the wrist. This is the four. The, the difference here is is significant, actually. In order to make this one as affordable as it is, and this thing's very affordable right now. It's incredible. Um, if you're looking for a Seiko dress watch, a true automatic dress watch with excellent finish, and I really do mean excellent for the price, um, this one right now is unbelievable. I think I saw this for three hundred and eighty bucks. I'm sorry, two hundred and eighty bucks. Two hundred eighty dollars. Um, this one, as I said the other day, um, this is the SARG or SARG 009 or SARG 009. Um, these two fit that segment of one kind of an everyday wear and one an excellent business conservative dress watch with great looks. You cannot go wrong with either one of these for sure. Um, I will note some differences here. So you can see the tapering on the case much more dramatic hugs the wrist over here than this one. This one's the more classic style. Dome crystal here, sapphire, flat sapphire crystal here. Just a day, I should say date over here. This is a true day date. Great movements, but this one here is the 6R15. This one here the 4R36. Okay, so the same movement is in the Seiko Turtles. This one is the same movement as the Seiko Sumo. Uh, so these movements are incredibly reliable, durable, excellent movements. But uh, in order to put this one out into the marketplace with this quality uh, finish, my dog is making a hell of a snoring noise over there. Uh, you will see that um, they did need to cut some corners here. Not really bad ones, i got to be honest, but yeah, it's there. Sure, this clasp is not amazing for a dress watch, but who sees the clasp other than you when you're out and about? You're in a business situation, you're in a meeting, you're going to lunch with a client. Nobody's going to be looking at this, let's be honest. They're going to be looking at the fit and finish, at the beautiful band. Now, I once the thing about this band is something to mention. Um, this is a brushed band that is very different than this one. The brushing is a whole nother level, I will tell you. The brushing is a whole nother level of brushing, for sure. Um, the link styles are different. The center link in this one, okay, and they're both 20 millimeter bands. Um, they have a mirror polish finish on the inner part of the center link. It, it, it somehow does something totally different. Um, aside from the fact that the, that the finish uh, is a dual finish, brushed polish finish, which is extremely well done, uh, that mirror finish on the inside of the links kind of takes you to something else. It's, it's just totally different. It really does catch your eye. It's beautiful. Uh, on the wrist, you can see with this guy, 
it uh, has a presence that's very impressive. It's 41 millimeters wide. Let me get rid of this box here. Uh, 41 millimeter wide watch with about 11 and change thick on the wrist. So a nice presence, but not overwhelming. Uh, nice presence. People are going to notice this. They're going to see you got a nice dress watch on. It's got that incredible dial, the blued hands. Uh, so that's just really going to catch people's eyes. You're going to be able to see it easily during the day. No problem during the day with visibility. This is not a loomed watch, so uh, you're not really going to be looking at this thing at night. It's something you're going to be wearing in a dressier occasion, in a business occasion. You can go daily wear with this in those scenarios. No problem. But at night, yeah, you're not going to be able to see this uh, once it gets dark. Um, but uh, I got to tell you guys, it's a beauty. It really is. It really is for the price. So good. And, uh, you know, I couldn't believe I just said 389 280 bucks, maybe less. If you look at some of the Japan sellers, I think online, like a shopping in Japan, one of those guys. Uh, Saya, I think is another one, Saya Japan. Um, some eBay sellers. On Amazon, I think this thing is about 300 just about 300 but that's prime, okay? So you get a two-day ship, or even faster if you want to pay a few extra dollars. You can get next day. Um, you'll get this thing right away. You'll be able to check it out if it's on Prime and see if it's for you. Make sure. Make sure you got a good one. That's kind of one of the reasons why I say, hey, it's worth spending a few extra bucks. And you're going to get the thing right away. A lot of times when you're buying in Japan, you might wait a couple of weeks for that thing to show up. And uh, this way you get it right away, see what you're working with. And just a beautiful watch. Just a beautiful watch, guys. I mean, it's hard to go wrong with these prices. You can basically buy yourself an excellent collection of high-grade pieces that are affordable. They can't go wrong uh, in most situations. Uh, you get yourself enough of them that you really have watches that serve purposes, meet your needs in certain areas. And that's kind of nice. Instead of having to spend all your money on an incredibly expensive Swiss piece, you can break yourself out into a few different segments and you can afford a few of them um, at the very least. And I think that's really what the value proposition is here, is you get very excellent materials, excellent fit and finish on some of these watches from Seiko. And your pricing still is incredibly reasonable. It allows you to kind of get the best of both worlds. Um, but you can see here, they've done a very nice job with this, this dial. It's got the raised uh, Seiko mark there. You can see it's not painted on. Uh, you have the automatic uh, retro font down there on the bottom. It does say made in Japan on the dial, which is something in and of itself. Uh, it means a lot, I think. I think it holds value there when you have a true made in Japan watch. Um, but the uh, frame day date window is really nice, very visible, no question about that. I can really see it in any condition during the day. Uh, if you're walking around, running to uh, catch a cab or a train, very easy to see what's going on there. Uh, so, guys, well, what do we have? We've definitely got ourselves a terrific watch, uh, which right now, I believe, if you can find this thing for about $260 to $280, you've got yourself a steal, flat out. Yeah, it's got a cheaper clasp. It does have solid end links. It does have sapphire glass. It does have a movement that's not as good as the 6R15, but um, when you consider the finish on this and you consider all the other things that it offers, I do, I do really think you're getting yourself a, a terrific uh, watch to wear in a more conservative business dress situation. Uh, I think this is a great, great option. Anyway, guys, tell me what you think about this one and what do you think about between the two of these? If you had to pick would this one meet your needs? I think this is probably the ultimate daily wear for me right now because it is both a little bit dressy, a little bit dressed up, but not really. It still has a utilitarian look that's very cool for daily wear. But this one here meets a need for a lot of people. It may be something you are looking for right now. Tell me what you think, guys. I would love to hear it. Um, love both of these watches. I think they're both terrific. See the difference here? You can see the... Um, you, you can see the... the, uh, the the end links here. This one, they're both solid end links, but the way those kind of meet the case is very different. I really love the way that happens. This one here, it really has a nice lower profile on the wrist, even though it has dome sapphire. This one gives you a more substantial profile, but because this is hugging your wrist at the same time, the profile is actually a little bit deceiving. It's lower 
and uh, much more manageable. If you have a, uh, I've got about a seven and a quarter inch wrist. Um, great fit. Just love it. Can't go wrong. Seven inch wrist, no problem. Six and three quarter, I think you're still perfectly fine. 41 millimeters wide, uh, 20 millimeter band. The 20 millimeter band width here makes it, I think, a little more, you can pull it off. You can pull it off if you have a smaller wrist. Going up uh, even north of seven and a quarter, I think you're perfectly fine. 41 millimeters and the dress watch is very great size. Great size, meets a lot of uh, people's needs in that wrist size. And you can wind this thing right on the wrist. That's pretty great. Would I take these in the water? Well, as I said with this one, no. They both don't have screw down crowns. So I probably would avoid taking them in the water. Um, but for the money guys, it's tough to beat these. It really is. Um, when you look at all the things that are going on with this dial, and the quality of this finish. And it really is nice. It's hard to convey what's going on here inside those links. But uh, inside that center link, that mirror polish, when the light hits it, it's just kind of dazzling. Very nicely done. Uh, and the dual finish here on the watch itself. Brushed here, polished there, brushed here, polished there with a flat crystal. Wow, you can't go wrong, guys. It, it, oddly enough, it kind of reminds me of the really nice finish on the Seiko Sumo, but it's more refined. It's more refined than that. So even more beautiful on the wrist, more conservative. Nice presentation. It's hard to go wrong. Guys, let me know what you think about these. I would love to hear from you. Um, I've got a lot more stuff coming out soon. And as you can see here, beautifully done. Yeah, look at this. Now, this is really cool, I think. Um, let me take off the, I don't know why they left the sticker on there on that one. Um, look at that. They've done a gold tone rotor and beautifully done. A little bit different than the normal rotor that you'll see. If you see here on the, uh, SARG, it's not as elaborate. It, it's got a little bit of, uh, turning done onto it. There's a little bit of ref refinement there. And also they've etched the outer part of the case back here, even though they both have uh, dual, uh, you know, these, these both have the see-through case back with the hard lex crystal. Um, they've actually, the, the see-through case back here, it, it, the surface is different. Um, they've, instead of etching the uh, case back, they've, they've actually put um, writing on the glass itself. And that's kind of interesting. Gives you a little bit more of a different perspective, different view. Uh, but guys, I really do think this is a interesting watch. It's a beautiful execution. The price is right. You don't get that clasp that you might with uh, a Sarx or uh, a Sarb. But the finish overall, the dial really catches the light. In some of the other Sarb models, the dial is different. It's a different, you know, there's a white Sarb that's beautiful, but it's just not quite like this. It's very different. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think about these. Uh, I reviewed this one the other day. I think this is one of the best buys out there for a daily wear. This might very well be one of the best buys out there for a entry-level dress watch that has the look of something that you truly maybe, if people if they get a glance at this, they're going to think you paid more. They're just going to think that that's a much more expensive watch on the wrist. And um, I think that's when you win, when you can pay less and look like you've got uh, a lot more on your wrist, but you still have quality materials that you're happy with. You've got a scratch-resistant Sapphire crystal watch uh, with beautiful stainless steel and um, a great automatic movement. Anyway, guys, once again, tell me what you think about these. I would love to hear from you. Um, definitely leave me a like and subscribe. I would appreciate it. There's going to be a lot more stuff coming out. I've got a lot more um, special and limited editions that I've caught my eye here recently and my trips to Asia. I will have some more stuff for you very soon. Anyway, let me know what you think about this beauty here. The SARY055 Presage Automatic Dress Watch from Seiko. Thanks again, guys. I will talk to you soon.